Radhe Radhe everyone, our dandavats and embraces. Uh, today suddenly appear Ragunadas, our dear Baya, from Radha Kunda. So we hope that he will also participate in our sharing. <clears throat> and uh, Chakshuji will read Vilapa Kusumanjali, verse 30. So whoever wants to share, uh, I don't see who is on the screen, but whoever wants, just be, be free and kind and uh, share your feelings with uh, all of us. Yeah, I think that all translations are set. Yeah, thank you, Davaji. And we can start. Rade Rade to all of you, my heart in praise. Jai, Jai Nanda Ji. Rade Rade. No, no, I can see. We are reading the verse 30 from Vilap Kusumanjali. And um, I don't know if it's the microphone is too close or too far away. I start, and if there's any complaint, please let me know. The Italian is coming. He's okay. going. No. Oh, Indivarakshi, girl with blue lotus eyes. Will there ever be a time when I can ornament you? with blue bangles, inset with many jewels. When can I adorn both your hands that are expert in all arts and that are very dear to Sri Hari with beautiful glistening rings? Explanations. Slower. Oh, Indivarakshi, girl with blue lotus eyes. Will there ever be a time? when I can ornament you with blue bangles inset with many jewels. <coughs> when can I adorn both your hands that are expert in all arts and that are very dear to Sri Hari with beautiful glistening rings. So maybe we can say something about these beautiful words or oh, Indivarakshi. Girl with the beautiful blue, bluish eyes. <clears throat> So sometimes Raghunath is addressing Radhika like a girl with restless eyes. And he is giving different names of this girl who has a restless eyes. But now he is giving description which color of eyes Radhika has, which kind of pupils she has bluish, which are always restless, bluish, and shiny. Radhika's eyes are bluish because she is always thinking on this blue boy, blue lover of her. So, through her eyes, the color of her eyes, we can see 
how Radhika is focused on Mohan, on his form, and also through her, through blue color of her eyes, we can feel how much feelings are condensed in her hearts. Because of this condensation, the eyes becoming blue. Oh, my dear Mohan, I'm always thinking about you, and I'm only focused on you. So my eyes became the same color like your body. So this is the example of being one pointed in love. Not with the mind, not with intelligence, but with the love, with full heart. <clears throat> And then <clears throat> Raghunath is addressing Radhika in this very intimate way, confidential way, glorifying in a subtle way, hidden way, glorifying her love for Krishna by glorifying her eyes. Then he is saying, Will there ever be a time when can I ornament you with blue bangles? So Radhika doesn't need ornaments. She is already ornament. The most valuable ornament. All her emotions are her most valuable ornaments. But Manjari, maid servants, want to serve the Swamini to increase these emotions. So usually we are using ornaments to make us a little more attractive and beautiful. But the Tulsi Manjari wants to even more increase Radhika's emotions by putting specific kind of ornament, blue bangles, on her arms. And these blue bangles are actually made of sapphires, blue sapphires, which are set, deeply set, in gold. So we all know that sapphire, when you have sapphire <clears throat> with nicely cutting face, facets, facets, I don't know how you call it, it's very nice jewel, attractive jewel. But when we put this sapphire in the gold, it becomes more attractive. And then the purpose of his existence is fulfilled. Sapphire is embraced with the gold. Actually, Krishna is embraced with Mahabhava, golden <coughs> Mahabhava Swarupini. And we, here is, <coughs> we can li uh, listen, the, this beautiful prayer of Raghunath, who is trying to increase Radhika's emotion for her Mohan by remembering her more and more. It's not that Radhika doesn't remember Krishna, she always remembers Krishna. But the point is to increase her emotions unlimitedly. Tulsi wants to put blue bangles around her arms. So that Radhika, when she looks with her bluish eyes on a blue bangles, sees so many Krishnas <laughs> in these different sapphires. 
So in that way, she feels that she can give him so much pleasure. Not only one. <laughs> She's seeing so many Krishnas. Because she is full of so much emotions that Krishna cannot receive them all. <coughs> and Manjari knows that. So in one way this is the excellence of Manjari Seva. How to increase Radhika's emotion for her beloved even more? And how always to, to arrange these situations that Radhika, when she cannot allow herself to see Krishna in front of the others, she can look in the bracelet mm -hmm. and reflection on the faces are very clear. Can we imagine this scene? So many obstacles are around in the form of elders, others, and so on and so on. But Radhika and Krishna are changing their love by looking on the bracelets with so many faces on that. So this is Paraki above. And this to see reflection. To see reflection, yes. <clears throat> and this is Paraki above. And we should learn to feel and go deep in this Paraki above, forbidden love, for those who are not familiar for this. From Manjaris, who are already on that level. And it's not only Parakya Bhava through the Bengals. In in next sentence, he wants to put the rings on the fingers of Radhika. And each ring has a different stone. And each stone means something, emotionally means something. Not astrologically, but it's okay. But another way is emotionally. Each color of the stone increase some specific emotion. Please, Udavaji. Hello. I just wanted to <clears throat> suggest a new definition of Paraki above. I'll go pick. It's true, as you say, that we define it as forbidden love or out of, out of the normal. But let's define it as love for which the lovers invent the rules as they go. That the rules are, of the love are being invented. That the norms, the morals are being created by them through the loving practice. It's not that they're breaking all the rules, mm -hmm. which is also true, but that they're inventing new ones along the way. Mm -hmm. yes. This is the ocean on invention. They're always making a new <laughs> and fresh. So it's never old fashion. It's all a new fashion. So, because this is the nature of transcendental emotions, they only need m more intensity, fresh intensity, because this is the nature of pure love in the land of pure love, Vraja. So, this para... Yeah. I don't know, I, um, I just came in, but um, you were talking about Parakya Bhav. So, one is the Parakya Bhav, which we can hear and listen in the Leelas, but how to how to practice Parakya Bhav, Guranga Sundar, in the here and now, and I was thinking, actually, we're very fortunate because our Gurudev is full in Parakya Bhav. So he's sometimes very confusing, very convoluted, very secretive, yeah. very close, and again far. 
Sometimes he plays with us, we don't get it. Sometimes he says something which we feel like, oh my God, what is he saying now? You know, like it's beyond our morality. He's inventing rules, right? As he goes along with us, as Udov Vaya was saying. So I think we're very fortunate because Gurudev is in the mood of Arada Dasi. So it's natural for him to speak also sometime with us in this parakya way. And for a disciple, it can be at points very challenging, right? But if we adopt that mood, that bhav, it's, it's beautiful to practice this with our Guru Dev. And then, of course, with our Guru Manjari, that's, of course, something which we are aspiring to, you know, that we can also fully taste and relish this bhav, which is so uh, sweet and so uh, mixed up. <laughs> Full of feelings. Yes, it's a hidden, actually. Yeah. And we are practicing with our Guru. This kind of Parakya Ba we are practicing and learning in our relationship with the Guru. It's very confidential, and at the same time, nothing is seen outside. And whatever you see inside, you, like Gopinath say, you are never sure. <laughs> so let's remember, morality is external. <laughs> An internal, <laughs> what, to, what to say about morality in Parakya Bhai, my dear? There is no morality. Yeah? Morality is reserved for the Swakya above. I mean, ma uh, ma morality is material. Yeah, external. material, yes, external. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. But the Guru, Gurudev is the master of love. For me, it's a master of love, pure love. So he has a perfect way how to teach each of us this art of sacred, hidden love. He is doing with me according to my inabilities. He is doing with you according to your abilities. He is doing with each of us in a unique way because we are unique and different levels. But his desire is that he try, at least try to teach all of us this parakya this forbidden love. We cannot, <clears throat> this must be clear, we cannot have, uh, learn Parakya Bhava from Radha and Krishna. Yeah. We can listen about their Parakya Bhava, but only from intimate maid servants yes. who are in, in Parakya Bhava, who are relishing and who are serving this Parakya Bhava, we can learn. And be infused with Parakya Bhava from their hearts, not from Radha and Krishna. Yes. If we are infused from Radha and Krishna, let's say, <laughs> then it's a Hajiya mentality. I'm, I'm not pointing you, but it's a Hajjah mentality. It's completely wrong conception. It's imitation. Imitation, my Baya said. <laughs> so we need guidance who is in the mood of Parakya Bhava. Then we need to accept that mood. And through acceptance of that mood, this Parakya Bhava mood from our Guru Manja will be infused in our hearts. And this is the way at least how I understand that I'm trying to practice. And it sounds quite logic, actually. It's the only way. It's the only way. If, if we want intimacy with our Gurudev, who is a maidservant of Radharani and who is living in this parakya, then it's the only way that we also have to practice it. Otherwise, we reach our, our mind will reach limitations and it, it will get like confusing for us. Completely. And uh, he's so merciful that he's allowing us to be in this intimacy, you know. And this is, a, I think, a, a great, great uh, gift from, from Radharani that we should accept that the fo in the form of our Guru Dev, we can get this mood. We cannot get it by only by reading and meditating. We have to need closeness with, with our Guru Dev on all levels. And each word. I'm looking now, each word which is Raghunath is writing in these beautiful flower-like words is Parakya Bhava. 
each word we can go deeply in the meaning and ultimately we can reach to the Kama Gayatri. Nivriti Nikonj. Because this is the goal of Manjari, to put them together in different ways. So many words are written in the codes. <clears throat> because Parakya Bhava is written in the codes, using so much metaphors, synonyms, different pictures. First of all, a heart and praise to everybody. And uh, yeah, after some time, uh, one year now, Radha Kunda, I came back to uh, Munga Mandir here to our friends. And yeah, what I just, just felt is something very beautiful right now is that um, when we talk about what we, you were all mentioning, this is actually this the highest form of this is Manchari Bhavu Bhashan. And when we when we when we consider that this is the most precious gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then we can understand the importance of this. Uh, Manchari Bhavu Bhashan, because that is what he is showing in Antya Lila in the Chaitanya Charitamrita in the, in the verse, I think it's chapter 14, something around that, where he is really observing Radha and Krishna. Like, like you said, you mentioned before, that is our, our position is to observe this, not to imitate, to observe and see it and look at it. And watch it, this is Raza Dashan. And that is, that is actually what Mahaprabhu showed in the, in the last, in the last time of his life. And that's what is the culmination of this love, of the highest love. Because before we knew, everybody knew about, uh, like Madhaventa Puri, his Param Guru, he gave already, uh, some feelings about, Saki bath, but this Ujwala Ras, which is also like this comparing, you can compare to Saki bath, that is enhanced by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and that is Unat Ujwala Ras, and this is actually what what means contemplating, like you said, so beautiful, the gold. And the jewel, like yeah, 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 there is a blue, blue and gold. That is actually Mahaprabhu. This is the form. This is the mood of 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 Radharani, who is coming to this world to show us this wonderful Upashan, the highest gift, and this is actually the highest form of prem. Manchari Bhav Ubashan means the one pointedness from us, from the Mancharis towards Radharani. And this is a beautiful extending love which we get from because directly from from Krishna we don't get that. Impossible. We get it through when Krishna is touching Radharani. And Radharani gives us this high emotion. And that is like when this observation is perfect. When our meditation, when this Upashan becomes perfect, means that you are watching the exchange of Radha and Krishna. This is what I was just feeling for the first. Explanations. A divine stream 
of transcendental visions streams through Sri Raghunath's heart. Even those who are in the class of neophytes have some of these realizations. But Sri Raghunath is in the kingdom of Mahabhav. He experiences all these things in a lively and vivid way. And after experiencing this, he reveals it through his prayers. Even in his external consciousness, the internal consciousness comes through. That's why his prayers are touching the heart so much. His eternal consciousness is always immersed in the ocean of Mahabhav. And then it's completely natural that these kind of feelings are just bursting out of his whole existence. How? In the form of his words like a flowers. His words are manifestation of his Mahabhav. It's not ordinary prema. It's not just sneha. It's Mahabhava. And we need such persons to listen from their mouths these streams of Mahabhava. And through this stream, slowly but surely, like we say, even, it's written in the beginning somewhere, even someone who is in the beginning stage can feel some drops of this strong stream. Mm. So meditation, of ours, our meditation, has to be focused on his feelings. Because he is opening the door for us neophytes, sadakas. He is opening the door of kunja, nikunja, nivriti nikunja, radha kunda, govardhan, yamuna, of lilas. And he is doing it not by his imagination, concoction, like some poet. No, he is seeing, directly seeing this beautiful lila, and after that he is writing. Many times I am asking myself, how he could write this, after this crying, strong, severe feelings of pain out of separation, how he could write it, you know. And usually we say it's for our benefit, it's for his compassion. <laughs> yes, it's okay. But I think that's much more deeper <laughs> reason is, mm. because he wants to express even to himself on Sadaka Vesha what he is constantly diving in. And when he is writing, again he is coming in this experience deep and deep and deep and deep. And then we are relishing these remnants. Um, I just remembered one time uh, Gurudev was in Radha Kund and he was sitting with Ananta Das Babaji whose uh, commentaries we are so fortunate to relish. And then Gurudev was saying, you know, your commentaries are so transcendental. 
And then Nantad Babaji was starting to shiver and he said, I don't even know how I wrote this. When I read myself, I'm surprised. I have no idea. I, don't, I have no idea. It must be Swamini who is dictating this, you know. So much is the mercy, you know, of those who have experienced and are... Uh, And one more thing I was just thinking, Gora, Goranga, when you were talking that how we get touched, you know, a single drop can change our lives. So if we all maybe go back and remember the day or the moment we met a devotee for the first time, we saw an image of Radha and Krishna or of Mahaprabhu for the first time, or we, we read a book about Radha Krishna for the first time, what it did to us, you know, what what kind of prema shakti is in this, no? And um, I just remember one time a devotee told me this story that uh, Srila Prabhupada was in the West. We just wait until. Thank you. Srila Prabhupada was in the West and he was in a place and a man was walking, this man was telling the story, he was walking by the window and he saw Prabhupada drinking a glass of water like this, you know, in India you drink like without touching the glass, you know. Yeah. yeah. He only saw this and he surrendered. How is this possible? How is this possible if Prabhupada if is not infused by Prema Bhakti? Only by drinking, watching him drinking a glass of water. This was Krishna Chandra who told this story because he has this capacity to, <laughs> to, to catch the fascination for, for this path. No? But this image stuck to me. Like we, If we all go inside, we can feel that moment and we have no idea why why we are here even. It's not even our choice. It's just because we got this one drop and that made us mad, you know? Are we on the process to becoming mad? Because it's so much when Madhurya becomes Audarya, which my Raghunath Das Baba always says so nicely, when this spills over, this highest form of love of Radharani spills over in the form of Nitai Gore, then this can happen. Then these miracles can happen in our life. Sorry. So this is the power of prema, which is going from the first, from the beginning stage of devotional life up to the end. On Shraddha, prema is present. On the level of Sadhu Sangha, prema is present. How we will feel attraction to sadhu if there is no prema. How we will have a faith if there is no prema. Maybe on that stage it's still invisible to us. But this is the influence, strong influence of prema or Shimati Radhika. In his Swarupa Vesh, Sri Raguna Dasko Swami as Tulasi puts blue bangles on Swamini's wrists. <clears throat> A golden color slightly shimmers through the blue, reminding Swamini of Shyam, the blue bangles, and his yellow dhoti the golden color. What a wonderful handicraft. How wonderful is also the address in the Varakshi. Tulasi especially addresses Swamini like this 
to express what she relishes within her heart as she sees the blue bangles. All the emotions are manifest in Bhava Mai, her form and her bath are one and the same thing. All the emotions are manifest in Bhava Mai, her form and her bath are one and the same thing. So, this is the nature of transcendental body. There is no difference between emotions and the form. And we can add, it's not, it, there is no difference with the name. So, we, the same thing is with the spiritual body of devotee. Spiritual body means emotional body. Body which is made from emotions, Bhava Deh. Our material body is made of skin, bones, blood, and so on and so on. And we, like a soul, we are different from this body. But spiritual body is emotional, pure emotional body and also pure emotional form. It's not easy to understand because we have to relish it and to practice bhajan to really realize that. And we need Kripa for that. <coughs> and the more devotee is identifying himself that he is spiritual, not that he has spiritual body, but he is spiritual body, Swarup. His nature is coming and bursting out even in his material body. Mm. Like electricity, you know. If, if Gopinath puts some cable electricity on me, I will start to shake, you know. Because electricity burns out of my body. So the prema which is condensed in Bhava Deha, in Swarup, is bursting out. And then devotee is rolling on the ground, crying, and manifests all the symptoms, praying, and so on and so on. So this is the state of consciousness of Raghunath. He is not ordinary yogi. He is spiritual identity like beautiful young maidservant of Shimati Radhika is completely present in him. He is that. This can you repeat again. All the emotions are manifest in Bhava Mai. All the emotions are manifested in Bhava Mai Radha. Radha is Bhava Mai. It means that all emotions which can we can imagine or not imagine are present in Radhika because she everywhere is seeing Krishna. She everywhere feels Krishna in all directions. Sometimes it's written ten directions. 
So it's not ten directions, it's unlimited directions. <coughs> because she is completely filled up with bhav for her lover. Her form and her bhav are one and the same thing. Her form, rupa, and emotion is the same thing. There is no difference. This is transcendental truth. This is not materialistic truth. This is not logic, <laughs> philosophical truth. And, and the, the best example for our eyes is our Gurudev. He's full of sweetness, no? Whatever he does, when he eats, when he sleeps, when he shouts at us, sometimes maybe. <laughs> But it's his inner emotion, his inner bhav, you know, is coming out. It's always there. Like, who is more stylish than our Gurudev? Whatever he wears, he just looks amazing. <laughs> Even if it's just a loincloth around him. You know, this is, this is because well, we had this sharing with Udav Bhaiya that the inside and the outside, that disappears, right, Udav Bhaiya? There's no more boundary for sadhus like Gurudev. We are very fortunate to witness this and we have to witness it more for us also to absorb and practice this, you know. We have this leading example. Look how sweet he is in everything because his inner mood is sweet and soft. <laughs> Chaitanya Charitamrita says, her body consists of prema and is formed by prema. Hence, she is known in the world as Krishna's beloved. From the time of Purvarag, when Radhika first saw Krishna, she saw the whole world to be full of Krishna. Therefore, she told her girlfriends from Govinda Das, O oh, Saki, as soon as I saw Kana, the whole world became filled with Cupid's flower arrows. And my eyes could not see anything else anymore. This is the love of the embodiment of love. The poet Jayadev describes the condition of Virahini Rai in the Kunja. Syamasunda is late, and the Sakis describe Virahini's condition to Syamasunda as follows. Oshyam Viraini Rai dwells in a lonely place and draws a form of you with musk, taking you to be Cupid, she draws a makara fish under your form and offers obeisances unto you with a mango but arrow in the hand. Offering her obeisances, she says, O Madhava, I take shelter of your lotus feet. If you reject me, even the nectarian moon is burning me 
with its scorching flames. You are so rarely attained, and today I came so close to you in my meditation. She takes the form she drew on the canvas to be Krishna himself. Therefore, she sometimes tells it about her separation from you and cries. And sometimes she laughs, thinking you to be close by. Sometimes she is sad, thinking you to have gone away from her. And sometimes she extinguishes the burning fire in her heart by embracing your form, thinking that you have come back. In this way, the embodiment of Mahabhav is decorated by a qualified maidservant who makes her relish rasa. Srimati sees Yamasuna's reflection in the blue luster of the bangles. When Tulasi sees the beauty of Swamini's eyes, she calls her Indivarakshi. She, whose eyes are as beautiful as blue Indivara lotuses. Sometimes Gurudev is explaining this like a rainbow, actually that all the colors which are present in the rainbow are also present in the radical size. Because different emotions which constantly are coming and going through the radicals all Mahabhava existence, embodiment of love, is just like a different colors. And we can see that the blue, yellow, or the gold, and red are the three main colors. All other colors are actually a result of mixing of these three colors. Blue, red, and yellow. Yellow is the embodiment of Radhika and is Radhika. Blue Mohan and red is their Anurag, passionate love. Only with passion these colors can mix <coughs> passionate love. So when they are embraced, sometimes the both of them, they are becoming green. Because blue and yellow, when you mix, becomes green. If, if there is more blue color, <coughs> then the green is darker. It means that Krishna is a little bit more superior. But when the green color becomes lighter, it means that golden color is more superior. I, I don't know. I, it always brings me back, where can I see this now? 
where can I see the exchange of love of Radha and Mohan in the eyes of the premikas? If I'm sitting close to a premika who has like tasted this Adasi of Radharani, I can see it on his body also. I can see it in the eyes of that premika that he is drinking. I can even see how the complexion of that premika is changing sometimes. Sometimes it's darker, sometimes less. Like this we have to observe. For that we have to sit close to the premika Rasika Vaishnavas. Now we can see the symptoms, no? Like Goranga Sundar was saying, the inner bhav is coming out all the time. And when we have those closeness to see, we can feel it also. I just had this one, sorry, this small story of our Gurudev. He's coming to me a lot today. <laughs> So, uh, so one time, many years, like more than 10 years ago, uh, we were in a room with Gurudev in Dole, in France, you know, this Mela. I don't know if you have been there. So Gurudev comes out from the bathroom and he's just, you know, changes his clothes. He sits down. He, we peel a banana and give him a, eat, to eat a banana. He takes a bite and he does like this. And we're like, Gurudev, what happened? What happened? He lost a tooth from a banana. <laughs> and Krishna Chandra was in the room. And he's like, from a banana? <laughs> like, how is this possible? No. If you really in this sweetness, then even a bana biting a banana can take out the tooth of a premika who is really a premika of Radharani. Yeah. So, again, coming back to this, very fortunate, we are close to our Gurudev. This, we have to use this chance to develop this intimacy, to understand the proper mood of Gurudev so that this can come into us. We have to ex absorb Gurudev's, Guru Manjari's mood, not that Gurudev has to fit to my mood. Yes. Hallelujah! <laughs> then we are like going like this, like Guru says, no, we have to touch the nose like this. So I don't know, it's just my, my humble prayer that we all can develop this relationship, you know, this intimacy, because it's only for our benefit, you know, it's only for our benefit. If we can see the premikas, how they are acting, and what Goranga Sundar, what we're reading, is manifested through them, and through the books of Nandadas Babaji. This is not that we're reading. It's feeling this text, no, Goranga? Yeah. It's only feeling. You read the same thing again, you, f you feel like you never read it before. How possible? How many times have you read these words? I feel like first time I'm reading. How is it possible? Yeah. Because it's fresh of feeling. It's only a bhav. This we have to catch. We have to catch the bhav. The knowledge we cannot even grab, no? It's not, but the bhav we can get from the writings, from the instructions, from the feelings, from the talking with Gurudev, with Premika, Rasika, Vaishnavas, with close association. Your eyes are naturally beautiful, but when they see Shyam, they are so much more beautiful. In the opening verse of his Dana Keli Kamudi, Srila Rupa Goswami prays to Sri Radha's eyes that reveal the ecstatic symptom of Kila Kinshit for the welfare of the world. May Sri Radha's glances that are beautified by the bouquet of the sevenfold Kila Kinshit ecstasy, bestow auspiciousness on you. When Krishna stops Shirada on the road near the Danagati at Govardhan Hill, Her eyes attain a certain shimmer because of her slight smile of joy.
Her eyelashes are covered with teardrops, and the corners of her eyes have become slightly reddish. Having been sprinkled by Rasikata, tastiness. They have begun to shrink because she sees Krishna standing before her and her pupils have become extraordinarily beautiful as they assume a certain sweet kind of crookedness. Swamini is fond of black things, and any kind of blue color incites her. As soon as any kind of blue color comes to her, she feels as if Shyamasunda has become has come before her. And when she is angry, she doesn't want to see anything but is a blue. Yeah? <laughs> but when she is a uh, mood, <coughs> completely in love, intoxicated with her, then everywhere she sees the blue color, because she is Bhava Mai, she is seeing her beloved. But when she's jealous, in man, angry, she's closing eyes. And if someone who is with the blue color appears in, in front of her, she doesn't want to look at him. <laughs> Nothing in the nature, even the blue lotus flowers, she doesn't want to look. So this is the crookedness of love. And this kind of emotion in Radhika gives Krishna such a intense pleasure that no one can give to him. And this Kila Kinchita, we don't want to speak about this Sanskrit, <laughs> These Kila Kinchit symptoms of Radhika are constant exchange of feelings. Yes, no. Suddenly she is eager and she feels eagerness and she wants to embrace him, jump in front of him and suddenly she is very shy. Then she wants to go at home. But in the same time, she wants to stay with him. And every of this, it's in Chaitanya Charitamrita, is uh, more elaborately, very more nicely explained. But every time, this is the moment when she is exchanging through her eyes and smiles, slight smiles. Mm. She is exchanging different feelings, mm. shyness, jealousy. I want to run away from this place, what he's doing here. No, I want to stay with him in the same time. And when Krishna is witnessing this, how intense her love is, he is completely in ecstasy. But not only he, Manjavisar also. And here we hear that uh, Dan Komedi Keli Lila the toll, toll tax. Now, Goranga Sundar was explaining that actually they want to meet, but it's not favorable. Sometimes it's daytime. She's with her Sakis, she's with Lalita and Vishaka, and Krishna is so burning to get the tax from Radharani. And what is the tax? The tax is the kiss, you know. 
So he st he stops, sir. Oh, you can. It's open control. Jai Guru So he stops them and says, "You have to give me tax." And Lalita is like, "Ah, we're not going to give you tax. You know, this is our area. You know." <laughs> then he says, "Okay, then I'll take you as hostage." But taking Lalita as hostage won't help, really. So what does Mohan do? He takes Rupa or Tulsi as hostage. Why? First of all, Radharani has so much prema for her manjaris. Nobody can take her manjaris away. First thing. Second thing, the more parakya, Goranga Sundar, is that she can take, she knows that Radharani will has to stay back. And who will help them when they go in the Kunja? Manjuri has to stay there. So he's kidnapping, he's kidnapping for the purpose of seva for the Manjuri. <laughs> no, no, don't mute Gurudev. No, 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 no. Gurudev, what you feel? Manjuris? Gurudev? Uh, uh, yeah. So when Krishna is taking Manjari as a hostage, uh. he knows that Radharani has no choice than to stay with the Manjari and then the Manjari can serve them in the Nikunja. Yeah. Right. But Radharani is to only, not to Krishna. Only to Radha, yeah. But when both are there, then Rup Manjiri, senior one, they go to uh, to to satisfy also to Krishna's feet because Rati Manjiri can take Radha feet. Means the Guru take take the feet uh, to Krishna and the the dasi of Guru he take, taking the feet of uh, 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 Guru Manjari or taking the feet of Radhika because he is the real teacher. Mm -hmm. Radha Rani is our real teacher. She teaches how to, how to one pointed and service for the Krishna. She is, she is doing and teaching in Manjari, you become one pointed. Around. Yeah. Which one is open? Hey, hey she got it. More the first one. Uh, you are fond of anything which may remind you of Shyam. Through its color or name, summer trees, the new moon night, the fresh monsoon cloud, or blue lotus flowers. She doesn't see the blue bangles, but she sees Krishna. She wow. cannot understand this. In Chaitanya Charitamrita it's mentioned, Radhika is called Krishna Mai because Krishna is within her and without her. Wherever her glances fall, there she sees Krishna. She's seeing the bangles, but she thinks she sees Shyam. 
Tulsi sees that Swamini's eyes that are of the same blue color as Krishna is are filled with emotion. When she sings, she sees Shyam. That's why she addresses her as Indivarakshi, blue lotus-eyed girl. When they see Krishna, these blue eyes become even more beautiful. She does not know whether she sees Krishna or the blue bangles. Tulasi performs Prasanga Seva by reminding Swamini of Shyam. Tulsi will now place the bangles on Swamini's arms that she calls Hari Daita, Hari's beloved. How many expressions of love Radhika is doing with her arms? Through dancing, through walking, through embracing, through standing, sitting. She is whatever move she makes with the arms is so fascinated to Krishna. Because in that way she moves his heart. Even when she just lifts one finger, he is completely intoxicated with this. Because she is embodiment of love. And a few days ago, uh, on the day of appearance of Radha Mohan, we have a theater, <coughs> and theater starts with Krishna's, Krishna who is dancing. And he is dancing in a very attractive way, because he wants to attract all audience. And he did it. I noticed that everyone was fascinated with him. But in the moment when Radhika appears, she appears just slightly, smoothly, and made just little movements, and he was completely stunned. And all audience just <laughs> redi redirect their attention from him to her. Because she is embodiment of love and everyone is attracted for love. And all <clears throat> dance of Srimati Radharani was so subtle. Every movement, every uh, movement of her eyes, legs, movements of the body, was not like him, he's jumping, he's doing putting endeavor to attract everyone, playing flute, yeah, but no, she, it's just little, slight movements mm. of her body. She immediately catch his attention, but the attention of all audience. So this is the art how Radhika, through her love, because she is embodiment of love, is attracting her beloved. And Tulsi wants to adorn these hands, which are giving so much pleasure, Daita, they giving, hands are giving. Radhika doesn't want to take with hands. She is using hands to give love. 
the the mood of braja is so unique even to krishna right it's one is radharani is filling him with love and controlling him but it's also all the associates of radharani you know he relishes to play the flute because there is a reciprocity you know now i read this morning that krishna when he was in dwarka he was missing so much the braja mood that he put the flute away he was so ashamed <laughs> he had to put his flute away he realized that this is only braja mood he can be madan mohan <laughs> What is the use of flute? <laughs> what is the use of flute? Palaces. <laughs> so I was feeling like, yes, we are very fortunate that we can be in this, or we can aspire for Braja mood. Even the Supreme is aspiring only to be in Braja mood. He's suffering. He's even putting his flute away. Come on, like, so bad, or what? <laughs> He's ashamed, he says, because the flute has no power there. <laughs> Yeah, because this there's is no the there's no reciprocity yeah. there's no intimacy which kind of simple instrument is this everyone in this place i don't want to repeat the name everyone is which kind of simple bamboo bamboo who is playing on this you are the king so this is the mood and radhika she is expressing all her love with passionate but very subtle movements and manjaris exactly knows her heart and only they can transfer these feelings to us sadakas that at least we receive little drop of this re their realization not my realization their realization so i don't want my feelings mm. i don't want my thoughts i want to be to to dive in their thoughts pure thoughts and pure feelings and this is my free will which i gave up and even krishna wants to only live in braja mood yeah <laughs> Krishna is Radhika's Hari and he removes all obstacles with the savor of his own sweetness. He takes away all her shyness, mm. opposition and other obstacles to the meeting or her savoring of his sweetness. Hari is Chatura Shiromani, the crown jewel of clever pranksters. By cleverly attracting Shiradika with the sweetness of his form, qualities, pastimes, and flute playing, he makes her forget everything. In his Radharasa Sudanidi 231, Srila Prabhupada Saraswati shows how difficult it is for Shirada to maintain her pride. <clears throat> when Shiradika is angry with Krishna, her first resolution is, I will not look at him anymore. But Krishna, the crown jewel of clever pranksters speaks in such a sweet way and stands before her as if he begs her look at me just once seeing the sweetness of his form 
the Sakis tell each other. Ah, how sweetly he stands there in his threefold bending form. The life of that lady love who does not see that sweetness is wasted. <coughs> Hearing these words of her friends, Srimati becomes eager to see Krishna and looks at him <coughs> looks at him once. Thus her first resolution is broken. Her second, her second resolution is, I won't speak to him. How nicely Krishna is speaking. Swamini cannot stay silent anymore and tells him, go to that girl that you love. What are you standing here for, speaking such clever words? She means another gopi, of course. Thus, her second vow is gone. Her third vow is, I won't touch him. <laughs> but Krishna gradually brings his foot forward and touches the tips of Srimati's toes. This makes her unsteady. She, so she angrily takes Krishna by the hand and pushes him out of the kundra. Srimati sings, just see, now I've also touched him. If I could not keep any vow, then how can I keep him away? Oh. This is Baba, this is Puraki Baba. Every move and pose yes. is immediately destroyed. Destroyed. <laughs> and this is Raja Mood. Yeah. No one, there is no use of vows in Raja, you know. There is no use of austerities in Raja. If we, to be broken, no? yeah. yeah, only use is to be broken. We create it as a fantasy of some truth being delivered and then mm. it's transgressed. Yeah. Yes. So many times Gurudev is saying, if you're coming in Raja to, to make vows and good luck. You know? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> good luck. You will be completely distracted because this is not the land of vows. Other dhammas, yeah. holy yeah. places, you, we have to do penances, mm. we have to do austerities and make vows. To it goes one step further, the, the seduction is the process of breaking the vows. Please repeat. Yeah, that's, that's... Please repeat. Now, uh, it's true what you said, but the, the Paraki above goes one step further because the attraction and the seduction passes through this inability to keep the vow. Yeah. I set a rule, and the, and, and the rule is, I can't keep the rule, and this is part of the, the attraction, the logic of the attraction, yeah. of the seduction. Yeah. Yeah. And when the rule is broken, yeah. then starts festival of love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then another, and then another rule, and then it grows again, yeah. and then a third rule. Yeah. No. My heart exceeds my ability to create vows to govern my heart. Yeah. Yeah. And it is a shame. Yeah. <laughs> and I think very important is also that these vows can be abolished by the feeling. Yeah. Because in other areas, you they don't you don't reach the person because he's you know. No, I'm very behind the, the wall of his vows. So, like uh, Manjari makes the vow to decorate Swamini, 
and Krishna makes the vow to destroy the Shringar, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's constantly breaking each other's <laughs> vows, you know. And as Uddhava said, then more, more excitement comes, like the dam is broken, you know. But then it needs again to somewhere there has to be someone to hold it, you know. Then again, the, the reservoir fills up, you know, and then like, you know, it's like when you have these um, uh, rivers which have this like, um, Flows, no, there's like uh, water, yeah, there's little waterfalls, yeah. no, like, yeah, yeah. and then they accumulate, and then again it goes, you know, there's many stones and obstacles, but it's flowing, and uh, this is Braja mood, you know, like, either, like, take it or, no, I'm not saying this, but it's really make helps a lot to transgress our own uh, moralities, you know, which we, 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 we cannot identify with in this Raja Prem. As Uda said, they're just there to again increase, no? Like, that's why they say that the Sakis are there to expand and increase the Lila, no? Without the Sakis, without the Manjuris, there is no, there's no possibility of that intensity. It would just be flat. And this is not what the, the divine couple wishes, right? So Radhika holds Krishna by the neck and brings him back into the Kunja. In this way, Hari steals Swamini's heart in so many ways. <laughs> Therefore, Shiradika once told her Sakis. <coughs> oh Saki, tell me, what should I do? I don't know what kind of spell Vidakta Rai, the king of clever pranksters, has put on me? Yet I can't resist the temptation to step onto the veranda to see him without considering how crazy and dangerous that is. By seeing his form, I've built my own samadhi. I've dug my own grave. Ooh. Day and night, my heart cries in a severe fever. If I saw anything else in front of my superiors, the name of, Sh the name of Shyam may accidentally come from my mouth. Tulasi puts the bangles on Swamini's wrists. How beautiful these bangles look when they attain a place on Swamini's wrists. Your voice is not coming. Because, uh, so you have to speak more loud. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. <coughs> when Swamini dances, what? no, sorry. Uh, how sweetly the uh, jingle, Runu Junu, Runu Junu, mm -hmm. enchanting the chant of the world. When Swamini dances or plays ball, her bangles jingle like the enchanting weapon of Cupid. In the morning when Krishna goes out to tend his cows, Purva Goshta, he sees Radhika standing on the watchtower. like a golden lightning strike on the jeweled palace, wearing a cloud blue dress. In front of her superiors, Swamini cannot openly gaze at Krishna.
While she pulls her veil over her head, her bangles jingle. This enchants the enchanter of Cupid. The surrendered maidservants understand their mood. During the rasa dance, Swamini's bangles also jingle. How wonderfully she moves her lotus-like hands. Her bangles buzz sweetly like she-bees on lotus flowers. Her hands with stems, her arms. How sweetly these bangles jingle when Swamini shakes the dice with both hands during their daily game of dice. How much Shyam relishes this. This sweet sight is an elixir for the eyes and this sweet sound is an elixir for the ears. While she serves Swami... This is elixir, sorry. This is elixir for Krishna's eyes and ears. But this is also elixir for Manjari's eyes and ears. Mm. But it is also elixir for Sadaka's eyes, inner eyes and inner ears. Because we have now great fortune to listen and drink through our ears, and immediately in our inner eyes we can see this picture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just look at all the yeah? Elixir. Elixir. So listening, like a drinking the nectar, Amrita. So this is real elixir, which can revive us, all of us. Because it's already reviving Krishna. If he can be revived, what to say about us? <laughs> so this is a great fortune. And the words of our acharyas are also this elixir. They are giving, they are real medicine for our deafness, blindness. This is real elixir. So I just. Elixir brings from death, death. Death, yeah. yeah. From death to life. This is meaning of elixir or nectar. So, and if we drink it, that means. We change the, our view, we change our being. This is what we, what we get here from Gurudev. We get a, a new life and we only have to drink this elixir. And then this new body will start life. Awaken. Awaken. And elixir means also eternal life. So we move from the death to the life by drinking this elixir. Gauranga Jaiho. So. <laughs> um, from my own experience, sometimes in the beginning the elixir is very bitter. Ah, I don't like it. <laughs> Ah, doesn't suit me. I'm different. <laughs> My guru is different. I'm different. But it elixir means also that my inner poison can come out, and he guru Dev can feel it, and he takes the poison from us, right? Like like when Shiva takes swallows the poison in his throat. This is guru Dev, no? He takes it. So the more we can 
take out, allow him to take out, the more he can fill. And it's really a fuss on the Boden, we say in journal, it's endless. There's no limit to it anymore. This is elixir, no? Then we're really alive. Then we're not, we say, this body anymore, no? Right. This is the poison. The identification with this dead body. Yeah. Actually, this is water, some earth. Now it's a little hot. Okay, <coughs> some space we need. But this space, this water, this earth is not we. This is, we get from the material world, actually. And this is also a gift, this body, but only to uh, uh, realize the eternal body. And this we can uh, bring in alive by this elixir. And sure, it is in the beginning, it is bitter, be because our identification 100% by this material body. So we, we, we don't like to accept this. No, 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 this is not possible. I am this body. Oh, my God. So false ego is, 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 is a heavy guy. Don't allow this. But uh, step by step, and by the mercy of Gurudev and the association of those who have a little realization, they will bless us. So in this association of the saints, I will say, they give us, they have also a little step in this eternally body. And so by their blessing, we think it's yes. Otherwise, in the association of, of all these sleeping bodies outside, we again, we fall back in this illusion of a false ego. So we have to drink this Alexia, right? And, you know, if you've ever been with uh, drunkards, people have been drunk, what happens to oneself, you also start feeling a little drunk. And you start imitating, you know, their behavior, and you're like, you know, you're shaking. And so, if we are in association with premikas, we should also imitate that because it's really fun to be in the association of some of rasikas who are really deeply drunk the divine love. No, so we should really try it out. <laughs> Master, <laughs> time is short for us to. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada, he brought the example of a person who has joined this, mm. uh, Gelbsucht. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the <clears throat> remedy is to drink uh, sugarcane juice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you have joined this, the wow. sugarcane juice tastes bitter. Wow. Yeah, right. So this was Prabhupada's example of the right. okay. taste of the remedy. <laughs> So we continue, while Tulasi serves Swamini, the kinkari brings all this relish of Shyam Nagara into her heart. Swamini's heart is engrossed in rasa. She is Haridaita or Indi Varakshi. Once, during the Rasa dance, when both Radha and Shyam are dancing, Shyam suddenly stops dancing and Swamini says, Why don't you dance? You dance so nicely. I don't know how to dance like that. Shyam says, You dance even nicer than me. I see how beautifully you dance and I can see how I dance myself in the pupils of your eyes that defeat the blue lotus flowers. When I see my own reflection in your eyes, it's clear to me that I don't dance as nicely as you do.
Sholasi gladdens Baba Mai, emotional Radhika's heart, with the pictures of these mem memories. How beautifully are Swamini's eyes when she is with Sham. Swamini says, Tulsi, I am anyway mad after him. Why do you make me even more mad by reminding me of him? After hanging the bangles on Tulasi, puts jeweled rings on Swamini's fingers that defeat the buds of golden Champaka flowers in beauty. Mm. Sri Vishwana Chakravati writes in Krishna Bhavanamrita. Sri Radhika wear, wears jeweled rings on all of her fingers, mm. except of the thumb, the index finger, and the middle finger of her right hand. Normally the moon and the lotus cannot be seen together. But on Sri Radhika's extraordinary transcendental lotus-like hands, it is as if the moon fearfully takes shelter. Therefore the moon's beloved stars are surrounding the battle-like fingers of these lotus-like hands in the form of the finger rings, diffusing a lovely kind of beauty. Shrimati can see reflected in her jeweled rings without being noticed by her superiors. Mm. I repeat, Srimati can see Krishna reflected in her jeweled rings without being noticed by her superiors. Okay. Or rather, with the blue lotus eyes, no one can attract the Krishna bee like you. I have a keen desire to decorate your hands with jeweled ornaments. I will put rings on your fingers that are as beautiful as the golden buds of Chumbaka flowers. Seeing that abundance of beauty, the Krishna moon will be very <coughs> pleased. Please call me your maidservant and keep me at your lotus feet. This is the end of the explanations. I just was feeling that why actually it is said Manjuri? Why? When we consider, we look at a, a Tulsi, right? And how can we see what the Tulsi needs? The plant. Because the plant is Radha in this sense. But how can we see what she would need? We look at the Manjuri. If the Manjuri is with the head down, we see, oh, the plant needs water or something like this, right? So, this incredible uh, feelings, what a manch actually in um, in this one poem, it is said that we the manjari is a small Radharani. She exactly exactly feels what Radharani is. When when Krishna he comes to a kuncha where 
this our sweet brother Rani is sitting, he doesn't he doesn't go into the kunja, he doesn't need to go into the kunja. What is he doing? He looks at the mantri outside of the kunja, and then she see he sees what if this is sad or she's a little angry or she's dancing. Then she sees what if what is what is Swamini? What is Swamini? She's sitting inside. That is her mood because it reflects on the mantri. <laughs> And this why that's why the mantri, the mantri is so important in that in that pastime, because the mantri is reflecting the mood of Radharani exactly. So what what I can what I can feel here is that that is so beautiful when when she's in man. So that reflects on the mantri, and the mantri is sitting outside of the kunj. Krishna comes and sees the mantri in man, so he see, he knows that Radharani is in man. So that is the, the actually the the this wonderful um, transferring of the mood through the mantri to what is what is Radharani's mood. <coughs> So one time, Radharani, she comes, she's exhausted. I make it very short. She's exhausted and she lays down on the bed. And a mantra is sitting next to her. And she's massaging her feet. And while she's massaging her feet, She's also falling like a little bit asleep, like this, like she's nicking. And then she goes on massaging the feet. And she looks at, and Swamani is, is already nearly falling asleep. And she slightly opens her eyes. And she looks at the mantri and sees that she's also, she, She's tired, she's falling asleep like this all the time. And then she says, she, now, she takes the mantra to her side and she puts it on her chest. And she says, you also have to sleep. Mm -hmm. But the mantra is saying, no, no, Radha, I really want to serve you, I really want to serve, I want to serve your feet, I want to give you a massage, I want to go on with this, please let me go on. And then the mantra says, no, 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 I really, I really don't want, I, I just want to go on, please let me go on with this, with this beautiful seva. And then Radharani says, no, you have also to sleep, sleep now. And what she's doing, they both are sleeping. Now, they both are sleeping next to each other. And then in the sleep, Radharani thinks and feels that the, that is, she takes, she, 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 she like feels like that is, Krishna is lying next to her. And then she, she touches the mantri and in this moment, can you imagine what happens in this moment? What the mantra feels in this moment, she gets all this transferred, this happiness Radharani feels, because she thinks she's touching Krishna, then this happiness goes over to the mantra. And then this mantra is totally in ecstasy. It's like when you a mantra doesn't want to have a touch directly from Krishna. No, never. She gets the touch. Krishna touches Radha and she gets so happy. And then Radha touches the mantra. And the Sith happiness comes a hundred times more. A lot more than she herself feels. This is, this is actually the real. <laughs> this is transferring the feeling. And it's, it cannot be higher than this. That's why Mantri Bhavu Bhashan is the highest form of Prem. 
<coughs> this is this is really to you can feel it. Our monetary our 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 monetary existence, and that's why what 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 Gora said so nicely before. It's all a, it's all a question of what you identify with. You can identify with this body, okay, <coughs> but you also can identify with your swaro. It's not so difficult. So why is it so diff? Why, why is it for many people so difficult to identify with the swarup? Because our swarup is actually our real existence. Our swarup is our our real life. It's our reality, and what we are living here is not reality, my dears. This is illusion. <coughs> this is called the Mahamaya. But our Swarup is not in Mahamaya, it's Yoga Maya. So, and this is the transferring from this energy, from this Lila Shakti. This comes to our heart. And then when that happens, you're done. <laughs> uh, Raghunaji, there's nothing more to uh, Raghunaji, thank you. So beautiful. Also, Arti is coming, but I just want to make one point. You described this Leela so beautiful that Radharani pulls the manjari into the bed. But I think in this topic we have to be very careful, you know, that the manjari is not replacing Krishna in that moment. That we have to be very clear, no? She's giving the reminder to Radharani of the past times through because she has seen and served and she has written it on the canvas of her heart. So Radharani, when she sees the manjari, she remembers the past time. But it's not that she's being touched and she remember no, this we have to be a little, you know, this is very deep subject you have touched, which you only, you know, it's, it's, it's very, we have to little, little be careful, my dear, because it can, it can. No, because she feels. That yeah, yeah, I understand what you say, but this is a pastime which, you know, <laughs> I, I my feeling sorry I had to say it. Yeah, please okay, but you okay, it's a very beautiful Leela. If we see it from the perspective Yeah no Goranga Sunda. Yeah yeah. Yes yes. Yeah. Both of you are right. Both are right. <laughs> just just to add that yeah, that, yeah. that nuance. Sorry Bhaya. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So we can stop here because Arati will start and Gurudev wants that we <laughs> we are very punctual. When we hear the sound of the bell, immediately we should oh, stop. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not a problem to continue just a, yeah. a few. So Gurudev's yeah. desire is just...